welcome to today's vlog. Today's vlog is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be focusing on some things that I learned growing up weird um, and how I've taken that in well with me as I've grown up. So if you want to hear all about that then stick along and if not I'll catch you on another vlog. But yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Growing up, I feel like I often felt like the odd one out. I was constantly moving up until I was in seventh grade. I went to a new school every year. Um, seventh grade, I went to a new school, stayed there for eighth grade. And then freshman year, I was in a whole new state having to meet new people that I'd never met before, never knew with no connections in the town. So, you know, um, so I was very used to being the odd one out in the class every single year to the point where it's like I used to well I always hated going to a new school but I used to hate it so much more because who are you gonna sit with at lunch when you're a little kid who are you gonna play with at recess and that first day is usually just me kind of analyzing people and watching them being observant and then choosing the person who is the least scary to go and be friends with often <laughs> um and so I feel like I had a lot of insecurities about who I was because I always felt different from other people. I always felt like, oh, I'm crazier. I have a more intense sense of intense or grown up like sense of humor because since I was like nine or 10, even before that, I was watching things like Mean Girls. Is butter a carb? Yes. And I was watching things like freaking bring it on. Brittany, this is not a democracy, it's a cheerocracy. I'm sorry, but I'm overruling you. You are being a cheer tater, Torrance, and a pain in my ass. All of those movies, the scary movie series. Are you all alone? What's up? What's up? What the? I watched all of those things super young, so my sense of humor was a little uh, older. <laughs> that being said, um, so I always felt like there are a lot of like pieces of me that I can't just like bring into elementary school and be like, oh, everybody's gonna love me. Ha ha ha, have you guys seen Scary Movie? No, because they're all watching like The Little Mermaid. So it's like, I always feel different from not only like my sense of humor and things I watch, but also just like growing up having less than most people. I also felt different in that way and always moving. And I always just felt like I was weird. And when I was younger, if someone would call me weird, I'd probably be sad. But now I'm like, I embrace it. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking weird. But even though I always felt weird, it's like, I feel like I would use that to pick out other weird people too. And that's not saying any of my friends, I'm not calling you any of my past people I've been friends with weird, but I would always choose out people that like also strong personalities and like weren't as afraid to show it, but were also extremely accepting of other people. And like, you can just tell those people because like who they are, because you can, you can really just by watching them in a classroom, see the difference between someone who's going to be really accepting of anyone and people who just were raised to judge other people and stay away until they know more about you. And if you're like me and you like hold who you are really close to your chest, then probably won't be friends with those people. <laughs> Did I become friends with a lot of people who were spunky and fun and would accept all those crazy sides of me even though like when I look back it's like some of the crazy shit I don't even remember a lot of times like I don't know like I would just be fucking crazy because my home life was a little bit crazy and I was just a crazy kid I don't know I watched my old YouTube videos and I'm like she's a little interesting she's a little funny um but i always was like i love to be the entertainer in my friend groups i love to be like making jokes i love to be like planning out things for us to do i love to like be doing like things like that even though i hate like having to reach out first that is something that's hard for me growing up weird i like always felt like i had to hide who i was and hide those parts of myself because who knows how the people will see you otherwise because i had extreme fear of judgment from other people and so I would like hide lots of parts of myself until I felt like I got comfortable and would then be more myself in front of other people but it's like I don't know growing up 
weird allowed me to now that i'm older realize that it's like i love all of those weird fucking parts of me they are what make me me and at this point in my life like sharing things on the internet sharing all my thoughts sharing my weirdness sharing my little quirks it's like i don't care if you watch this and you're like you're a weird fucking girl thank you cheers um because like the thing is is at the end of the day being weird isn't a bad thing and i think like we're raised to be like if you're different than other people assimilate and that's like just a fucked viewpoint in general for a whole bunch of different reasons that i don't need to get into but it's like just because you feel different than other people doesn't mean you have to change yourself into them like growing up I could never be happy just being like everybody else. I was always wearing crazy things, taking crazy pictures, <laughs> um, living my fucking life. I would always be cr posting crazy videos on my YouTube channel, just entertaining. I called myself Comedy Girl 101. There's a lot of videos where I'm like pretending to be my own cameraman. I'm like <laughs> fucking performing, doing cheerleading for the camera. I'm just being myself because like the truth is, is everything that makes you weird is what makes you you. And if you decide like at any point in your life, like, oh, I'm just going to stop being weird. Like, how does that really work out for you? Do you feel like you grew up as a person or do you feel like you grew up and matured, but you lost like key parts of your personality? Because I feel like a lot of times when I try to fit in, even at like workspaces and I like leave out pieces of my personality or I'm not comfortable telling my jokes myself, it's like people just think I'm like, oh, that's that's Ethan's fiance. He says that she tells us that she says these jokes, but it's him and he just feels bad because she doesn't talk a lot and she's super shy and this and that. It's like, actually, most super shy people <laughs> are just actually super introverted people with trust issues. Um who don't feel comfortable just like opening up right away to people and sometimes you can open up right away to certain people and other people because you can notice spots where they're judging other people you'll notice that and internalize it and not maybe be able to be your true self with them and it's like over time i feel like my weirdness has allowed me to discern who's gonna be a good friend and a good person in my life for the long haul and who's just here because they wanted to be they felt like they needed to be a part of the group you know what i'm saying it's like i feel like a lot of relationships you gain with people it's like when you lose those if you're being full yourself and you weren't a toxic person in the relationship and maybe nothing even like super big happened at the end of like the friendship ending but it's like i think when you're moving in an authentic way to yourself and you start to have times where like you are growing as people you're growing up and that person is choosing to repress parts of themselves that like that's why you were friends with them that's why you love them that's why you hung out with them it's like it starts to not only feel like a judgment on themselves but also maybe a judgment on you and it's like you can't really be fully friends with someone who is hiding parts of themselves because chances are they're probably hiding parts of you and that's not to say don't be friends with people who are struggling with identity problems that's just to say that like a lot of times when you grow up and you're like oh i'm weird and like let's just have a group of like oh we don't give a fuck people there's sometimes where it's like that like a person doesn't want to or doesn't have the confidence to just be fully themselves to everyone all the time or maybe that version of themselves changed and it's like I don't know, I think if you are so used to being authentic in your weirdness or your quirkiness or whatever, when other people aren't like that, it's easy for those relationships to fall apart when they were already there. Because it's like, if you knew exactly who they are and one day they just end up like not acting like that at all, how can you like stay friends with the person? Because you love the person who could show all of those pieces of themselves and when they stop doing that, that's not really the same person you're friends with. And that's okay. It's okay on both ends. It's a natural ending. There's so many people here. And in the same instance of like, it's okay that that friendship ended. You don't need to like hate them or think that they're this evil person in your brain. You can just choose to move on. And the biggest thing of it all is like, don't take the judgment of themselves onto you because it's still you projecting and thinking like, oh, they're acting differently and they don't want to be themselves because they perceive that as weird. So how do they perceive me? The thing is, is you have to accept yourself. I think about when I would be going and why the change even happened of to me being comfortable, like being like, oh, well, I might be alone in recess. Oh, I might be alone at a lunch table the first day. Is because I remember 
in like sixth grade um i was moving schools because we were moving to a middle school but i still had people that i knew from like fifth grade and my best best friend at the time uh we were so close in fifth grade in sixth grade i had to like move out of the neighborhood forcefully eviction uh, I, well evicted <laughs> um anyway but i still went to the school for the rest of the year um that was later i'm just you know so I moved out of the same neighborhood, so that kind of distanced themselves a little bit, just because we weren't hanging out as much. But the biggest thing is, is when I moved to that school, I thought I was gonna have lunch with my best friend and I was so hyped for that. And then she had her lunch change last minute. And I remember being so terrified of like, oh, I'm in middle school. I'm gonna be in a lunch with a whole bunch of sixth, seventh and eighth graders. I don't know or don't know super well, what, would I, what will I do? And it's like, I sat at a table with some people I knew and I felt like I was like not in the conversation at all. And I remember just that entire year, like sitting at that table and feeling like the odd one out. And then something changed in me to feel like, honestly, I don't really care how I'm perceived. If I'm perceived as quiet, if I'm perceived as annoying, if I'm perceived as like the odd one out in the group because I have somewhere to sit. And even if I wasn't sitting at that table and I was sitting alone, it's okay because I stopped perceiving lunch as this big like social setting where you have to do this, you have to do that. You don't have to do anything. I want anyone who's watching this and might be sitting alone at a lunch table to know that it's like, I think sitting alone that year would have been better for me because I could have sat alone with my own thoughts and be less anxious in my head about not being able to like step up in the conversation because I was so socially anxious. It's like, it would have been better for me to just sit with nothing and learn like, oh, I'm okay being by myself. And then I remember the next year I go to a different school and I remember this complete acceptance of being like, well, I might not have anybody to sit with at this different school. It was like K through eight. So we had recess again. I might have no one to play with, AKA walk around the parking lot with. I might have no one to talk to and that's okay. And then when I moved to a whole new state for high school, it's like, I reiterated that to myself. I'm like, you don't have to do anything anywhere other than just sit there and be. You don't have to do anything else. When you're feeling like the odd one out and you feel like you can't be exactly who you are at all times, you don't have to show your weirdness and quirks to everybody all the time. You can save those for people you feel comfortable with, but don't ever feel like you can't sit there and be comfortable in yourself and that it's weird if you're sitting alone. If you're sitting alone at a lunch table, you're not the odd one out. You're just comfortable with yourself. And even if you feel like you're different from other people, do you know that all of the people who, well, not all, but most of the people who are extremely successful, who are like iconic figures in business and in co celebrity culture, or just like musicians, like if you think about ones that you really love, it's because often in their life they were an underdog who were different than everyone around them. And that's what allowed them to come up with the ideas that like change their life. And so never for one instance, think that the things that make you weird or quirky are bad. It's what makes you different, it's what makes you stand out, and it's what's going to change your life in the long run. So when I think about like my little girl self who's crazy and weird and quiet at times, I just look back with fondness because I'm like, I know that I'm exactly where I am today because I was weird growing up and I'm still fucking weird now. And I love it. I ask Ethan all the time, like, do you think I'm weird? And he's like, no. I'm like, well, I do. And I love it because being weird to me is no longer like if someone would have called me weird growing up I probably would have felt sad and insulted but to me now it's like a badge of honor and it's like thank you I am different from other people and it's not like pick me girl oh like I'm different than everyone I'm not like everybody else like no it's just like I'm comfortable not having to talk like everyone else act like everybody else sing like everybody else make jokes like everybody else because that's what makes my joke a little funnier. That's what makes my voice different. That's what makes my life different. That's what I like, I don't like, it's what makes me me. And I don't care that my life is different than other people's because it's not their life to live, it's mine. And do I want to live their life? Fuck no. So I don't know. I think <laughs> like growing up fucking weird set me up for life. And I want anyone who grew up weird or still feels weird as they're growing up to know that like, it's not weird, it's just different. And that's fucking okay, and it's fucking beautiful. And I love you guys. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you sometime.